The Bay Area is at a tipping point. That warning comes from a new report outlining what rising sea levels will do to our region. Our investigative unit obtained an advanced copy. Now we found some of it could be considered revolutionary. The bottom line, sea levels will rise more dramatically and may happen sooner than many of us realize. Here's senior investigator Stephen Stock. Guys, some of the flooding models we're about to show you of this rising threat may sound like they come from alarmist voices of doom, but in fact, they come from conservative scientists, state planners, and yes, even policymakers. This report, this is the one Raj was talking about, one we studied for this story, one of three, identifies 14 different communities here in the Bay Area in danger of permanent flooding in just a couple of decades. Even so, we found that buildings are still going up, still being built in these future flood zones. And you, the taxpayer, most likely will have to pay to bail them out. This is all West Over. 73-year-old Margaret Gordon, Miss Margaret as she likes to be called, an advocate for disadvantaged communities, showed us around her neighborhood of West Oakland. And this would all be underwater. Yes. All this will be up underwater. According to new scientific models, this area could see water several inches deep across several of its neighborhoods, with oncoming sea level rise expected in just a few decades. Do you worry about the people who live here? Oh, yes, because I, I know that many of us are going to be displaced. We will never come back. According to state planning documents, including this one from 2018, Scientists expect that since 2000, sea levels could rise at least six inches and as much as 12 inches by 2030, just 10 years from now. As this graph shows, scientists say the rate of sea level rise is growing exponentially, all because of recent increases in ice melt and warming of the oceans. We are absolutely at a crisis point. Zach Wasserman chairs the San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission, or BCDC, a state agency that led the research on this report called Adapting to Rising Tides, a report that shows more than a dozen communities in the Bay Area at risk, including 91,000 housing units. It is a slow-moving emergency. Using that same data, our team created maps showing what a 12-inch sea level rise with a typical five-year storm would look like what planners say we should prepare for by 2030. In San Mateo County, parts of US 101 go underwater. SFO runways are covered. While the airport already plans to build seawalls, SFO could be left surrounded by water. When you have a certain amount of rising sea level, if you do not adapt, then you're going to be in trouble. Larry Goldsband serves as BCDC's executive director. You're going to have water coming in, and you're going to have housing stock that won't be able to recover and you're going to have communities that won't be able to recover. What does the public need to understand about this crisis? That there is no longer any way to stop it happening. The city allows this. Some of this is industrial and residential, all packed up on top of each other. But despite the warnings, our investigative team found that building in these areas continues, including two dozen major recent or current developments worth more than $13 billion. Are taxpayers going to be on the hook for some of these buildings and projects 30 years from now? We're all going to pay some out because that's what the public does. We either pay through taxes, we pay through FEMA coming in after a disaster. Why are those buildings still allowed to be built right now? For those that are within our jurisdiction, <clears throat> we are requiring uh, adaptation methods. Across the Bay Area, projects have been allowed to proceed in problematic flood zones. In Mountain View, using the same computer models, there's Google's Charleston East and North Bayshore developments that both could be surrounded by water. You acknowledge this is real? Oh, I do, yes, uh, and our city does. Mountain View's Mayor Margaret Abe Koga says for a decade her city has been pushing back against some development and requiring that companies prepare for rising sea levels. Even so, she agrees that four recent developments approved there are now at risk. Are the taxpayers going to be on the hook if this all goes south and it's worse than we expect? I think it's going to be a shared responsibility, but at the same time we are requiring these um, corporations to contribute. 
Further north in Menlo Park, the Facebook campus expansion project began in 2015. After that project was approved, Menlo Park began requiring all new construction near the bay to raise building foundations by at least two feet. Even so, mapping the data with a 12-inch sea level rise combined with a five-year storm shows that the new Facebook West campus, along with the original campus, would become an island. It's, it's definitely coming, and what are we going to do to protect our city? Menlo Park well, Mayor Cecilia Taylor was not in office when so Facebook West well, was well, approved well. and admits it could be surrounded by water sooner than anyone ever expected when it was first proposed. You're aware this is a problem? Yes. There definitely is a concern now. Then there's San Francisco. In 2030, with a five-year storm, there could be flooding around brand-new condos along Mission Creek. By 2050, 75 Howard Street could be surrounded. And by 2100, the brand new Golden State Warriors Arena Chase Center could have water all around it, inundating neighboring buildings. You'll have to wear your galoshes to get to a game. How are building projects like the Chase Center allowed to go forward when we know they're going to be sitting in a floodplain? There's a balance between working to adapt for what we know is going to happen in the future and living our lives today. Right now, as we sit here, is there a comprehensive plan to deal with sea level rise? No. Regionally? No. Should there be? Yes. And this all does not even account for events like king tides, El Nino, and 100 year storms. Those could all make this that much worse. A representative from the Golden State Warriors told us, quote, that when they built the Chase Center, they went above and beyond all state requirements for sea level rise in anticipation. And a representative for Facebook said that while all its new buildings account for sea level rise, the company is also partnering with several South Bay cities to protect the entire area from rising sea levels. As for San Francisco's planning department and Google, they did not return our request for comment. And just to say, we're just talking in some cases just a few inches or an inch. But when you drive your car on an inch of water in 101, Everything goes crazy during a rainstorm. Yeah, well, this we is a permanent it. inch of water. Are you getting are you getting different responses from the political spectrum here? Oh, this is a Republican side. This is a Democratic side. You know, it's side. interesting. That's a great question. Everybody we ask admitted this is a problem. When we ask, why do you allow these buildings to keep going? They say it's reality. It's money. We'll worry about it later, as you heard uh, from Mr. The, Wasserman and, say. and Mountain right. Views Mayor. That, that's too. right, Man Mountain Views Mayor. But they all, no one denies this is coming. So we all need to be aware and actually the state needs to get a comprehensive plan there is none right now right there needs to be an entire region approach to this good reporting Stephen. thank you, you. bet thanks Stephen. if you have a story for our investigative unit just give us a call 888-996-TIPS or you can visit our website nbcbayarea.com slash investigation